So I want to make this video for anyone who feels a bit disconnected. Anyone who feels like they've lost their soul. You could just be going through the motions in life. Just being like an NPC. You know, your feelings are superficial, shallow. There's no meaning or significance. You might even stoop down to the level where you see your actions as desperate and callous and evil. But at the same time, no, f you don't have a feeling or a connection of these actions being wrong. This is when I would say you've lost your soul. Now this is not a motivational video, you know, how to become rich, how to become successful. Uh, because this video could be for someone who is already rich or successful or achieved their goals in life or experienced all the pleasures that they want, worldly pleasures, desires in the world, but are missing something. They are missing who they are and why they are here. It could even be that their chasing of their wealth and success was the cause for them to lose their soul. So welcome to this playlist, The Light Path, where we talk about topics from a biblical spiritual insights and I want to tell you today how you can find your soul a lot of this I'm talking from experience the main experience where I felt I'd lost my soul was probably in my mid to late teens and after that when I was awoken to it I've spent the rest of my life finding my soul and nourishing my soul through a relationship with, with God his word through the spirit you know even even when you're a kid you feel you have more connection to your soul because it's the corruption later on that uh, you know causes you to have this loss but today I want to help you on how you can find your soul and the first step that you need to do to find your soul is to be aware that you are a eternal being okay you are eternal what you do here in this life what you experience what you learn will transcend past this lifetime whether it's evil or good you know that will set the trajectory of where the afterlife is going to be for you so you set the trajectory in this life direction and that's going to launch you into the afterlife if it's for good then it's for a good afterlife and if it's for evil then that trajectory is going to go into more and more evil. But the most important thing about this point is your religious background has no, it has little or no bearing on the awareness of your soul. You know, even the Bible says, Ecclesiastics chapter 3, that, that eternal life is kind of ingrained in the heart of, a man, of mankind. So everyone knows, like it's it's natural. Even before the Bible, like you know, in ancient Egyptian, ancient Egyptian culture was based around you know what happens after you die. Uh, there are even many uh, like atheist people that I've talked to, even the well-known ones, later have like this admission that they don't really believe in nothing at all. Um, they kind of feel that there might be something else they just don't think it's the mainstream religion but what happens for people to lose their soul is like it's not that they don't know but they actually ignore even in the bible in the book of romans it says like god makes it clear god makes his presence clear to everyone you don't have to come to the church or be part of a religious association it makes it clear but these people choose to ignore these are the people who lose their soul and that's why there's like two types of people in this world there's the ones that have the awareness of their eternal eternity um, and they live by it and there are others who have lost their soul they live by their physical instinct you know eat sleep all the days of their life until they're destroyed and amount to nothing I, I've heard a lot of like near-death experiences, um, you know, either first-person or uh, second-hand knowledge, you know, a friend of a friend, uh, 
there's, there's also a lot of stuff online as well and you know pe people have seen different things people have seen you know, their relatives um, people have seen Jesus and there's some experiences where they say they've seen nothing it's just black it's just darkness what so what do you expect when you set up your life so that you do only the things that you like your whole life is about you what makes you happy what makes you angry what you take pleasure in you know making sure that you've always got a nice lawn or a clean car what kind of eternal life do you want to have when you've lived your life in this way just about satisfying yourself you know these people they don't even push themselves um, to better themselves physically in life like they just want to be comfortable they are empty souls. And what do you expect after life when they live like this? It's blackness and emptiness. So the first part of finding your soul is an awareness that you are an eternal being. Living like you're an eternal being. But the next part of finding your soul is the bridge down into this physical world. And I can say that, you know, that thing, that physical thing, that bridge, I can talk about it in a lot of different ways but I think there's one way that would coin it one way that would know if you have a soul or not and that is empathy empathy is like the gauge um, of, of your soul how much soul you, you have you know you could have empathy only for your close family or friends or your loved ones which most people have you could have empathy that extends out to the people that you come across day to day you know maybe you could be called a good person for that maybe you have empathy for a more broader scale you know like in your city or your group and then you could say maybe you are a noble person for that but and you can also have empathy for fellow men you know, you could feel what people are going through overseas, other countries. You, you feel for them. You know, your, your prayers and your thoughts are with those people. Empathy does not gossip about other people. It doesn't criticize and make proud statements, lifting yourself up above other people. Empathy doesn't make excuses for why other people have gone through misfortune casting judgments on people's failures because they didn't follow your own wisdom that you won't go through what they're going through or or that they don't follow your religion or your beliefs or your politics it doesn't cast judgment on other people because they're not like you and that's why they're going through these things empathy doesn't take pleasure in gazing on explicit acts but ignores the brokenness and the tragic exchange of dignity, virtue, wholesome relationships, family, warmth, peace, self-worth and a life void, void of trust and intimacy and boundaries. The people who gaze upon these images for pleasure but they live life in both worlds, they live a double life, they don't give up their personal dignity but instead they feed off the brokenness of others who do give up their personal dignity to provide this content. Empathy doesn't take advantage or deceive or slander or physically harm someone else. Empathy does what you would have others do unto you. Empathy feels for the people who are hurting, who are suffering, even if it's not at your doorstep. Empathy prays and thinks about others and advocates on their behalf. Empathy is the gauge of your soul. But continuing down from the top-down path in finding your soul is, you know, you need to be aware that you're eternal and you be rooted in empathy, be based on empathy. But the bottom step to gain empathy is experience experience in this life some people say that you know they can learn by just hearing and listening or taking heed to warning but for a lot of people and for me personally I feel like I have to be I have to learn the hard way 
So experiencing things in this life, especially hard things, can make you trigger finding your soul. But you might say to me, how can you get experience and find your soul when experience is not really something that you can control? I mean, it's true that a lot of experiences um, that increased my empathy um, were out of my control. They just sort of things that happened to me that I couldn't, couldn't stop even. But it also at the same time, there are a lot of situations that present themselves in people's life. Uh, where people can choose an avoidance you know there are some things in life where people can avoid they have an option they have an option to avoid experiences you know you, you have an option to avoid perhaps being a volunteer or being a mentor or setting up a program running you know uh, a youth um, mentoring group a sporting group um, you're teaching someone something you can avoid that because you don't really want to bother yourself with dealing with other people you don't want to burden yourself you can avoid that but this is where you lose your soul because you find your soul in doing these things Jesus says he who wants to find his life will lose it but he who loses his life will find it another way is maybe there's a situation presented where you need to go through it you need to go through this hard situation except there are ways that you can get out of it maybe by lying or stealing or undermining someone or taking advantage or deceiving maybe you can get out of going through this hardship maybe it's a financial hardship maybe it's a relationship hardship but you can find your way of getting out of it by doing something immoral living life is going through the hardships of life it gives you empathy it makes you aware of your eternal being and it makes you find your soul and purpose so embrace what comes to you just bring it to god god will god god knows the best plan for you and um, set you on a path of growth and eternal life so that's all i wanted to share today uh, if you like this video please hit the like button please make a comment uh, if you like my content in general uh, especially this playlist please uh, subscribe and if you are riding a motorcycle take it easy and ride safe